Hey guys, Joe Fye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to cut off a bunch of half inch by eight inch wide aluminum plates and I'm going to do it three different ways. First I wanted to show you the blade that I'm using. This is a, I believe it's a Starrett Bear Claw blade and it's a variable tooth blade. And you can see the edge looks like it's just absolutely torn up but in fact it's really not. I believe this is a 6.8 or a 10.6 or a blade. I'd have to look at the box but you can order them in different, different pitches. And here's the difference right here. You have a section of the blade that is really aggressive for like cutting aluminum and such and then in between you have a bunch of small teeth. And that pattern repeats as the blade goes around. So this blade is ideal for cutting everything from 316 stainless to 6061 aluminum and I leave it set at basically the same speed on the machine. I think it's a 265 if I'm not mistaken but don't quote me on that if you really need to know inquire offline and I'll look it up. But what we're going to do is I'm going to cut this three different ways and I'm going to show you the difference in time cutting a piece of plate like this. Now because of the geometry of this particular machine or any horizontal machine it's a hinge. It comes down this way. So the movement on this end is more aggressive initially than the movement on this end but as it starts to level out it starts to come down parallel. So it should tear through about the first three inches of this material relatively quick, but when it levels out it's going to make contact with a full eight inches of 6061 aluminum. The saw doesn't know whether this is a foot thick or a half an inch thick, but you'll see it slow down quite a bit as it gets halfway through. I'm going to kick it in, I'm going to time it, and just from experience from having cut so many of these, I know that this is about a three minute cut. It is a hydraulic down feed right there. I'll make sure that is all the way down for the down feed. We're going to run some coolant on this and just so the camera can see the blade so none of you safety Nazis out there are going to comment on the guard being pulled back. It is wired back. I do not recommend that you do this if you're using a saw. You, uh, it's easy to lose track of what has teeth on it and what doesn't when things are moving. So do be careful with your safeties on the machines. Do not disable them and make sure they are adjusted properly. All right, let's put the power on, reset the stopwatch. We are sitting on zero right now and make the first cut. I suspect this is going to take just a little bit over three minutes once it makes contact. It'll start off real quick, get about halfway through, and from an end perspective, this blade will track full eight inches wide for about one-third of the thickness of this material. All right, this is step or, or actually process number one, laying it flat in the saw like everybody does. Here we go. on the actual video but I will not change the stopwatch. I'll make sure that when this part drops off that this watch is in front of this camera. Okay, 3.27. 327. Okay, if you have been with this channel for a while, you may have seen the earlier video where I showed you how to cut off multiple round bars. I, you know, I did five at one time, believe it or not, and they weren't welded or banded or anything. We just put them in here and strap them and go. This particular bar is what helped do those multiple round bars all at the same time. Stack them up in there. When you squeeze them, they expand and they lock. 
Well, this bar can serve another purpose, and that purpose is when you put wide material in there. So let's throw a piece of wide stock in here, exactly the same as we just did. And yeah, that's a Honda 750 in the background. We're going to put a piece of wide plate in here, and let me show you what, what the benefit that bar can also do for the same material we just cut off. This would be setup number two. We are back to zero on the clock. I am going to do the exact same full down feed, same blade, same RPM, but now we've taken away the full footprint that the machine would encounter and the blade is going to realize a lot less surface contact as it walks through this plate. Uh, I would expect at least the 30-35% change in how fast this gets through. So let's fire it up, start the clock and see if I'm right. One fifty. Not bad. All right, that is setup number two. You can see that that one was remarkably faster than the first one with the exact same settings. All we did was take away the blade's full width contact from that particular plate. Now, if you don't have the time to do this to your machine, and it's a, it's a very helpful addition. It doesn't take that long. If you have some downtime, I would really strongly recommend that. We're going to do the number three setup here. And this is one that I've, I don't use it very often, and so I'm not going to be able to right off the cuff tell you how much faster, if at all, it's going to be. But it is the same principle as this, only in reverse. We're going to take the blade and we're going to make the blade do the angle cutting and the part will be flat. But we're going to try to take away some of the parallel contact at the end. You can see the serrations in the end of this part, how it's more of a, an edge cut than a long diagonal cut. That is certainly why it's faster. So let's go for setup number three. And see how that one works out. Setup number three simply puts the plate up off the bottom of the machine. This reverses the angle of the blade as the blade comes down through it. Instead of walking through from the top, <laughs> well, it's hard to explain with my hand in front of the camera, but we have taken away the bottom half of the blade running parallel to the bottom of the part as the blade comes down. It will come down this way now and walk through it, theoretically. I'm going to bet this is a little slower than the one we just watched, but still faster than if this plate was on this surface. I'll see if I'm right. Everything will be the same. Same blade, same speed, same feed. This will be interesting to see.
Okay, call it 249. This is the second fastest. Laying flat diagonally jammed underneath our bar is the first fastest, and laying conventional flat as the machine is intended to be used is certainly the slowest. If you have any wide plates you need to cut off, consider putting one of these bars in or C-clamp a piece of stock to the top. The more angle you have on it, the better. This material is 8 inches wide. The throat on this saw is only 7 inches vertical, so I cannot stand this up. Ideally, standing it up would be the fastest because it's the least amount of saw contact. All right, there you go. Hope you got something out of that. Good luck. While we're on the topic of time-saving tricks in a bandsaw, another good one is to for large diameter round stock because the saw just seems to stall out and die halfway through. When the saw originally enters the part, it's not cutting a whole lot of material. But by the time it gets down to about a third of the way through, half the way through, it just seems to sit there and take forever to get through it until it gets naturally down to the bottom. And then of course it accelerates. If you want to speed your cut up in a situation like this, pick a spot on your part that where you think the material is offering up the most resistance and stop the cut right there. Without advancing the material any, pull the blade out of the slot and rotate the material. Now you can see effectively what has just taken place. The saw now thinks it's cutting considerably thinner material. It should advance through the material pretty quick. This works really well with stainless, cobalt, chrome, uh, much larger diameter than what you see here. This is a 4 inch 2024 aluminum. It's a little harder, but it's not going to cut as slow as a 316 or a 304. So that's a good trick, guys. Get halfway through the part, get 40% of the way through the part. Rotate the part 90 degrees and then continue the cut. You'll be surprised at how fast it helps. All right, that's it. Thanks.